Welcome to Electron Line, and here's a much more challenging problem for us trying to solve this one. Uh, here we have the sine of theta plus the sine of 3 theta, so what do we do with that? Well, the, thing, the way to think about it is to look at it this way. Let's do this on the side, we need some room. How about saying that the sine of 3 theta can be written as a sine of 2 theta plus theta. So now we have the sine of the sum of two angles, and we know what that is equal to. Uh, that is equal to the sine of 2 theta times the cosine of theta plus the cosine of 2 theta times the sine of theta. All right, now we still have to expand this a, lot, a little bit more. So here again we have the sine of 2 theta. That can be written as 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. So this here is the same as the sine of 2 theta times the cosine of theta plus the cosine of theta, oh, cosine of 2 theta. Okay, what is that equal to? Well, there's different possibilities here. We can write the cosine of 2 theta, that can be written, it's equal to the cosine square of theta minus the sine square of theta. Uh, the cosine square of theta can be written as 1 minus the sine square of theta, so this can be written as 1 minus 2 times the sine square of theta, or the sine square of theta can be written as 1 minus the cosine square of theta, so this would be equal to the cosine square of theta minus 1. So there's three different ways in which we can write the cosine of 2 theta. But if I look at this right here, I have the sine times the cosine squared, so I probably want to have something similar than that, so I want to use something that will give me something that looks similar to this, and I believe this might be the best way to replace the cosine of 2 theta because I want to make this term look very similar to this term right here. So let's try that and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to write the cosine of 2 theta as, oop, this should be 2 times the cosine squared theta minus 1, so 2 times the cosine square of theta minus 1, like that, times the sine of theta, because I can't forget the sine of theta right here. So this thing right here is the same as this thing right there. All right which means the sine of 3 theta can be replaced by all of this. So let's go ahead and do that, plug that in here, and then add that to the sine of theta. So the left side now becomes the sine of theta, plus everything we have over there, so it would be 2 times the sine of theta, times the cosine times the cosine is the cosine square of theta, plus when I multiply the sine of theta times this, I also get 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine square of theta. And finally, when I multiply the sine of theta times the minus 1, I get minus the sine of theta, and that equals 0. Okay, now, at first you go, wow, where do we go from here? But if you look carefully, notice we have a sine of theta here and a minus sine of theta, so that cancels out. And notice that these are now exactly the same, so I can write these as 4 times the sine of theta times the cosine square of theta is equal to zero. Now, of course, since we have a constant here, we can divide both sides by four and get rid of the constant, so we can write that the sine of theta is, oh, the sine of theta times the cosine square of theta is equal to zero. And here again, we have a product. We have the sine of theta times the cosine square of theta equals zero. Whenever we multiply two things together and they equal zero, one or the other must equal zero. So that means that the sine of theta is equal to zero or the cosine square of theta is equal to zero. Well, now we can solve these two independently of one another. Here we say if the sine of theta is equal to zero, that means that theta can either be zero or pi. Because remember, when theta is zero, sine of zero is zero. And when theta is pi, sine of pi is zero. Again, draw the unit circle. You can take a look at that. So here's our y-axis, here's our x-axis. Remember that the sine of theta represents the y-value of a point on the uh, unit circle. So over here and over here, this is where uh, theta is equal to zero, and this is where theta is equal to pi. For those two values, the y-value is equal to zero, so therefore the sine is equal to zero. So we have theta is equal to zero, and theta is equal to pi as the two possible answers based on that equation. Now for this equation we have the cosine square of theta. It doesn't matter if it's square or not because here we can see that when the cosine is zero, the cosine square has to be zero as well. 
and there we're looking for the x values of the point on the unit circle represented by the uh, uh, by the cosine of the angle so that would be when pi when the theta is equal to pi over 2 and when theta is equal to 3 pi over 2 so for those two values the cosine will be 0 which means that the solution here is theta equals pi over 2 and theta equals 3 pi over 2. So here the two values give us a 0 for the sine of theta. These two values give us a 0 for the cosine of theta. So there's a total of four possibilities to make the left side equal to the right side. And that's how we do that.